Hi friends, Prepared Suburbanite back with you. Um, I've been uh, contemplating the events of the last couple of weeks over and over in my head. And uh, I am, um, I, I don't think I've ever lived uh, during such a period of time, maybe in 1968 uh, with the Democrat convention there, the assassination of uh, Bobby Kennedy, uh, Martin Luther King, um, all the riots and all that stuff that was going on in 68. That was a pretty rough time. And I uh, think we're back there again. I, uh, I, I really don't know what to make of the rally that's been uh, staged around Kamala Harris becoming the Democrat nominee for uh, the 2024 presidential race. Um, my biggest fear is that she could possibly win. Stick around, I'll get into uh, some more of my thoughts and details right after this. The political operatives, um, the media, um, Hollywood, you name it, um, that's been behind this rally uh, that is surrounding Kamala Harris's uh, campaign, I guess, to be the Democrat um, nominee for president without ever garnering a single vote. And I know that's been said a million different times in a million different ways, but she's never earned a single vote. But she has the potential to become uh, a real potential to become the next president of the United States. The fundraising that uh, has been reported, um, somewhere over $200 million just mysteriously appeared out of nowhere and um, all found its way into the uh, Harris campaign uh, war coffers, um, it, it, very suspicious to me. And of course, there's uh, lots of political rumors out there about what's going on and how it's happening and um, folks that are uh, um, finding out that they have donated to the uh, Harris campaign. Um, but never did. Uh, that's pretty scary. Uh, Act Blue is uh, one of the most ruthless fundraising organizations, political laundering uh, groups in the the world. I think, and uh, if you're if you're like I am, you have to uh, really take a jaundiced look at the amount of fundraising that has been going on that is in support of the Harris campaign. I think that Kamala Harris is a communist. Now, while she may never have uh, officially joined the Communist Party, her political philosophies align nearly perfectly with every communist Marxist referendum uh, belief system that has ever been espoused. She's all for the redistribution of wealth. She's all for um, having uh, government-run health care for everyone, Medicare for all kind of a kind of a philosophy. She uh, delights in um, supporting wholesale changes to the structure of the United States government. Um, she just recently came out in favor of Joe Biden's scheme to um, enact or somehow uh, term limits on the uh, Supreme Court. And that's going to take a constitutional amendment. And that requires an awful lot of uh, support across the board. This isn't the same as um, having 18-year-olds eligible to vote or uh, women's suffrage or 
uh, anything like that. This is going to require, I think, two-thirds of the House, two-thirds of the Senate, and three-quarters of the states to ratify a constitutional amendment. It's been done in the past, not to say that it can't be done, but can it be done between now and uh, the election day? I don't think that's even possible given the makeup of the House and the Senate right now. So, uh, but she's come on board uh, supporting that particular philosophy to put term limits on the Supreme Court. And that's only for one reason, and one reason only, is that they want to force out some of the older members of the, uh, older conservative members of the Supreme Court so that the Democrats can appoint and uh, um, get passed through a Democrat Senate um, nominees that cater to their f communist philosophy, their Marxist philosophies, and their very leftist ideas. I am very, very concerned that the Kamala Harris campaign has a chance for success. When we look back at the results of the 2020 election, and I've got some notes here that um, I, I really found um, quite revealing. Um, Biden did apparently get 81 million ballots cast in his favor, whereas Donald Trump only got 74 million. There was about another million or so that uh, were oddball third-party characters or uh, candidates and um, write-in ballots and all kinds of different stuff, but that, that was about a million. So the, the total counted ballots for that 2020 election were 156.5 million tallied ballots. According to the U.S. Census, there was 168.3 million registered eligible voters. So that means, um, I, I don't know what the percentage is, but it's, it's a big percentage. And uh, it's often been said that um, your vote really doesn't matter, but the ballots do, and they count ballots. There are way too many stories. It hasn't happened to me. It may have happened to folks that you know, but uh, um, they get multiple ballots in the mail. Didn't ask for them. They just got them. Uh, whatever state it is, all that. But those ballots are the ones that they harvest. Now, that person can go vote. They can early vote. They can vote on voting day but they may have a couple of extra ballots sitting in their mailbox or on their kitchen table and somebody knocks on their door and says, hey, you got uh, a mail ballot. Uh, let me take that for you and I'll, uh, I'll make sure that it gets taken care of properly. And they fill it out however they want to and submit it uh, as part of the ballot harvesting nonsense. I suspect we're going to see quite a lot of that in the near future. That's going to really start happening. The money that's going around, uh, <clears throat> I really find it hard to believe that the Harris campaign is outperforming Donald Trump and his campaign, uh, the war chest there. And realizing that we're in a <clears throat> almost unreal situation right now. Over the last uh, two plus weeks, we've had an assassination attempt that the media doesn't want you to know about anymore, that we've had uh, <clears throat> the Democrat leading candidate, Joe Biden, suspend his campaign and withdraw. And we've now got uh, Kamala Harris poised to become the uh, very next Democrat 
uh, potential nominee for president, and uh, I, I am just pretty much beside myself trying to figure out what's really going on in this country of ours. There are so many folks <clears throat> that I uh, interact with, uh, whether directly or indirectly, social media or at church, whatever, um, that um, seem to be indifferent about this whole thing, that they are not shocked by what's going on, that they're not worried at all, that they have uh, what I consider normalcy bias on this, where they think, oh, this can't possibly happen here. And I think that's part of it there. The other dynamic that I see floating around um, in, in the uh, minds of people around here, at least in the circle that, that I'm familiar with, um, is that Kamala Harris is really the only answer that they've got against Donald Trump. Now, Donald Trump is truly hated by anybody in the Democrat Party, anybody in, uh, that's uh, liberal leftist uh, leaning. They absolutely hate him. Donald Trump syndrome uh, is alive and well. And I think they would vote for anybody or anything if it's not Donald Trump. They hate him so much that they can't stop drawing comparisons to him and Hitler, to him and Stalin, to him and any evil character that you've ever come across in the world, <laughs> whether it's uh, um, Sauron or uh, Morgoth, or whatever, um, Donald Trump in their mind is an absolute danger to their way of life. And I think they got that part right. I think we have a responsibility as conservatives, as Republicans, as folks that um, believe in life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that we believe in equality rather than equity, um, we've got a responsibility to make sure that we get the word out. I'm trying to do it here on this YouTube channel. Um, I want to make sure that the folks that are in my circle of friends and family are going to get out to vote and vote for Donald Trump, and you need to do the same thing. Whether you agree with um, Kamala Harris or not, I believe that if Kamala Harris gets elected president, that we can kiss these wonderful United States goodbye. And I am horribly concerned about that. So how do you prepare? for living in a communist regime. Maybe that's a topic for a future video. This is the Prepared Suburbanite reminding you to be prepared always, and I'll see y'all on the next video.